leading an international team as principal investigator and studying the geology and potential habitability of Saturn's largest moon, Titan. She has over 140 peer-reviewed publications and eight books to her credit, along with special honors and prestigious awards that fill page upon page. In 2016, asteroid 22454 was named Rosalie Lopez by the International Astronomical Union. She is especially proud of the Carl Sagan Award she received for her public outreach. Dr. Lopez is also a supporter of education, diversity and outreach nationally and internationally. And still she finds time to explore volcanoes here on earth, like Mount Etna that she saw erupt that started it all for her. I turn this over to Dr. Lopez now to share her knowledge and hopefully some of her stories of how she got where she is today, starting with stories of Yuri Gagarin in her native Brazil. She will welcome your questions following her presentation. Rosalie? Thank you. Thank you so much for that great introduction. And it's a great pleasure to be talking to you today. I'm sorry that uh, we can't be all together in person. Uh, and um, yes, uh, my interest in space started a long time ago. Um, I, my earliest memory, in fact, is of my parents talking about Yuri Gagarin going into space, this Russian who had gone into space. And I was so young that I, I didn't even know what a Russian was. Uh, <laughs> but um, I, uh, I just found that terribly exciting. And then I grew up with the Apollo program and I really wanted to go to the moon. Um, and uh, I thought, when, when I saw the movie 2001, A Space Odyssey, I thought that by the time I was like 40, I, uh, I, I was going to be working on a space station. Well, that didn't happen. I'm sorry, this is kind of dark. I'm going to turn a, another light on. Um, and. Uh, uh, I, and I wanted to be an astronaut, but I found out quite early on that um, I had some things that were not in my favor. Uh, being a woman, uh, back then only uh, one woman, a Russian, had gone into space, uh, and that was a bit of an experiment. Uh, I was Brazilian, not American or Russian, uh, and to top it all, I uh, am very nearsighted. Uh, so I realized that being an astronaut wasn't quite going to work out. And I decided to become a scientist and uh, help the space program. So that's how I ended up in astronomy, uh, studying in England and then uh, coming to the US to JPL uh, on a postdoctoral uh, fellowship and, uh, and I stayed. So um, today, uh, tonight, I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to uh, share my screen and uh, uh, start my presentation here. And uh, I'm going to talk to you about volcanoes, uh, exploring volcanoes on Earth uh, and beyond. Uh, because, uh, you know, volcanoes are very exciting. And, uh, and I'm sure that um, some of you have probably seen a volcano, whether erupting or not. Uh, and um, we have volcanoes not only on Earth, but on other planets. So this uh, photo was taken by the um, Yazoo volcano in uh, Vanuatu on an island called Tana Island, which is a great volcano if you want to go somewhere and see something erupt, uh, which is fairly safe. Um, it is, uh, you know, amazing. Uh, small explosions uh, that um, are just one of the both, most beautiful things uh, you can see. Uh, and uh, um, so, but we have volcanoes all over the solar system. Uh, uh, I'm not going to talk about all the planets and moons because that would, um, that would take too long. Uh, but uh, we uh, have uh, volcanoes on planets, on moons, um, uh, asteroids, uh, but, you know, uh, uh, active volcanoes are uh, much rarer. And the uh, photo on the right was taken by a colleague of mine in Hawaii, and uh, that's about 30 feet high, 
and this is what we call a, a lava fountain. Again, a, a great thing to see. Um, so volcanism is very important uh, in uh, planetary, uh, planetary science because um, it's one of the fundamental processes that uh, makes the surfaces of the solid planets and moons look like they do. So we have four major geologic processes that really shape the surfaces. One is volcanism, the other is tectonism, here uh, mountains, you know, the, the Grand Tetons. Uh, another is impact cratering. Uh, you see here the uh, meteor crater in Arizona. And the other is erosion. Um, uh, so you see here uh, you know, uh, on Earth, water and wind uh, cause a lot of erosion. And um, um, on Earth, uh, we find volcanoes mainly at the plate boundaries. So the Earth's crust is divided into tectonic plates. And uh, uh, you know, here in the middle of the Atlantic, you have the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, uh, where the plates are spreading apart. And for example, um, uh, on the west coast of North and South America, uh, you have a subduction zone where one plate is going under the other. Um, so plate boundaries are where earthquakes uh, and active volcanoes also happen. And here are just some of the major ones, you know, uh, represented uh, uh, on this map. And volcanoes are not all the same. Um, we have uh, several different types of uh, um, uh, volcanic activity, and some of them are very dangerous and some of them are not. Um, so uh, if you want to visit a volcano, uh, you have to really, you know, figure out where you're going and uh, what type of eruption that volcano has. So the major ones, you have places with geothermal activity like Yellowstone. You have Hawaiian and Icelandic eruptions, which are really like the least explosive, the least dangerous types. Um, uh, and uh, here on the top right, you see a lava lake in the volcano Ita Ali in Ethiopia. Uh, I'm going to show you some more photos later. Um, and, um, you know, and that is, again, a great thing to see. Um, in the middle, you have Strombolian activity, like that first picture I showed of Yazoo uh, in Vanuatu. Uh, that's a Strombolian type um, uh, eruption. Uh, then they start getting more explosive and more dangerous, like Pelean, Vulcanian, Plinian, Ultraplinian. Um, uh, you know, all these this major types are named after volcanoes somewhere. Uh, so, um, you know, Hawaii, Iceland, Strombolian is named after the Stromboli Island in Italy, Pelean after the uh, Mont Pelé volcano in Martinique, Vulcanian after uh, Vulcano, uh, an island off the coast of Italy. Plinian is not named after a place, but a person. Uh, um, uh, uh, Pliny the Younger, who described the uh, Vesuvius um, 79 AD eruption uh, in a letter to a historian. And that's the first scientific description of a volcanic eruption that we have. And then Ultraplinian, uh, luckily, are very rare. Um, on the bottom right, uh, you see a Plinian er eruption that was Mount St. Helens in 1980. And on the bottom left, you see a Vulcanian uh, eruption on Mount, uh, uh, Mount Etna in Sicily. So what causes uh, volcanic eruptions to be different? Um, it's mostly the type of rock which is linked um, to where um, uh, a, 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 on Earth, where uh, along the tectonic plates, um, the volcanoes are. Um, so uh, basalt, which is the dark rock on the uh, bottom right, um, that has the least amount of, for, for those of you interested in chemistry, uh, silicon dioxide. And silicon dioxide forms very strong bonds so when uh, the magma comes up from under the earth and, and uh, to, the, to the surface, by the way, under the earth, under the surface, it, it's called magma. When it erupts, then it, it's called lava. Um, but the magma has gases dissolved in it. 
Um, so uh, when that magma is coming up, the pressure is less and it's like opening a, a, a bottle of soda or a bottle of champagne that um, gas wants to come out. Um, in uh, a, a basalt type rock, the gas can come out easily. So that's why those eruptions are not very explosive. But as you get to andesite, dacite, rhyolite, the more viscous uh, rocks, then that pressure builds up and builds up and builds up and eventually it, it just explodes. Uh, so that's why uh, the type of rock is a, a, a really major influence uh, on how explosive a volcano is. Um, most of the Earth's volcanoes are actually under the ocean. Um, uh, for example, here uh, is a, um, a photo in the uh, East Pacific Rise. You get these chimneys of what looks like uh, black smoke. Uh, and um, uh, one of the great findings uh, about uh, these uh, places under the sea that are venting is that you actually have a lot of life around there. So here in the photo, you can see some like little white uh, sea creatures. I forget what these are exactly. Um, and it was a big surprise to people that, um, uh, you know, there were uh, creatures leaving uh, uh, that deep uh, in the ocean. Mm. And then uh, when the, uh, uh, you know, volcanism uh, that sometimes under the sea, it builds up, builds up and builds up. And then when it gets to the surface, it can even form a new island. And that's the case of, uh, for example, the island of Surtsey in Iceland in 1963. This photo on the right was taken by my PhD advisor who was able to see it. And um, and Surtsey, the island is still there. Um, it's very protected, um, very, you know, because biologists study how life is colonizing it. Uh, so uh, I, I never been there. You can't go unless you have a special permission. Uh, I've been near it, but not on it. Um, then we'll go to Hawaiian and Icelandic eruptions. Um, the top uh, left uh, is Hawaii, lava uh, going over a cliff. Uh, which in Hawaii, these cliffs are called palis. Um, on the uh, uh, bottom left uh, is also Hawaii, and that's a, a lava lake. Um, and, uh, and then the two on the right are from Iceland. Uh, and um, um, you see amazing, uh, th this, the bottom one is a fissure, and the lava flows coming out of the fissure. It's taken from above. And um, and the uh, top right um, is what we call a, a lava fountain, sometimes called fire fountains. And this is when lava is just whooshing out uh, like a fountain and uh, is absolutely spectacular to see. Uh, here is another one uh, uh, on Kilauea in Hawaii, uh, a beautiful lava fountain uh, with a lava flow. And uh, it, it, in lava flows in Hawaii, you can get very close to them. You can walk on them even. If you know what you're doing, you can see here the tip of my boot um, and, uh, and also my geologic hammer. So I'm actually collecting a sample from a lava that uh, is still flowing. Uh, so the you know, Hawaiian and Strombolian eruptions are the least dangerous ones to go see. Uh, but some things you've got to be careful about. This is Hawaii. Um, and uh, because lava cools very quickly. So lava uh, forms a crust that's cold, but underneath it's still molten and, and like 1200 degrees centigrade. Um, and in fact, you can see here again that uh, it forms a crust even while it's still moving. Uh, but then if you uh, pierce it with a geologic hammer, uh, is uh, liquid and very hot underneath. Um, so this is a, a lava tube. Lava in Hawaii typically flows in tubes, so the, the, the top crusts over, uh, but underneath that lava is still very hot and flowing. Uh, so, you know, you've got to be a, a little careful. And that's a, a great photo taken by a colleague of mine uh, of, uh, you know, they are walking over uh, a flow that on the surface is 
cold or cool, but underneath it's still, the lava is still running through those tubes. Um, Iceland, I wanted to uh, uh, show you uh, the eruption that um, uh, still some of it's going on. Um, don't ask me to pronounce the name of the volcano uh, because all the Icelandic volcanoes are very hard to pronounce. Uh, this was in July uh, and uh, I went with my friend uh, Marie Martin who might actually be in the audience. So uh, you can see this beautiful lava flow uh, in the valley and in fact, um, uh, we didn't capture it very well in the photo, but um, uh, it, it was very hazy. But in fact, there is some red here. It was actually, you know, exploding, mildly exploding. And if you go to Iceland, even if there isn't an active volcano, a great thing you can do, which, you know, I had not done before. Uh, and I'm really glad that Marie and I got to um, do it, uh, is go to the, an extinct volcano. Um, uh, and what happened in the, is this particular uh, volcano is that the magma drained out uh, and left a magma chamber um, empty. And you can actually go down. This is an elevator there on the top right. Uh, and it's uh, like a mining elevator. So you get, you know, harnessed on and you get attached to this elevator and, uh, and it goes down bumping against the walls. It's, um, uh, I'm sure this would never be allowed in the US uh, as a tourist attraction. And then uh, here, Maria and I are uh, at the bottom and uh, you can see, you know, beautiful formations of different uh, minerals. And um, it's a great place to see. It's like being in a Jules Verne novel, you know, you're really going down to, uh, uh, into a volcano. Uh, now let's go to Stromboli. Um, Stromboli is one of the Aeolian islands in Italy and it was made famous by a movie in the 50s called Stromboli with uh, Ingrid Bergman. It was a, a movie by Roberto Rossellini and that's where they met and started an affair that was a bit of a scandal in Hollywood. Um, I love this movie poster. Uh, it says uh, raging islands, raging passions. Yeah, unfortunately, I, I you know, I could never afford one. <laughs> they are quite expensive. Um, and uh, I went, uh, you know, a few years ago to Stromboli. I've been there a couple of times. And, uh, and that's a volcano you can hike up, you can see at the bottom right where people are. Yeah, you can see into the crater and at night is particularly beautiful. Um, these are mild explosions. So um, a place I mentioned before on the first slide um, is the uh, Vanuatu, you know, a, a, a group of um, islands that um, is a nation. And um, uh, the, the, the uh, capital is here in Port Vila, but they have two particularly um, uh, nice uh, volcanic islands. Um, one is at the bottom here is Tana. Um, and that's where this Yazoo volcano is that has thrombolian activity. And then another one uh, further north is called Ambrim, and that has one, sometimes two lava lakes. Uh, so that's this archipelago is near Fiji, and, um, and it's actually a great place to go to see a volcano. Uh, so that's, um, uh, you know, where um, I, I went there a few years ago. Again, I've been there a couple of times, but I went with um, um, uh, a Brazilian uh, TV crew and, um, uh, and, and also uh, with some uh, American colleagues, uh, we were doing some research and they, you know, and they came uh, to film. And uh, this, um, uh, uh, the flights between the islands are, um, um, uh, you know, quite um, in quite small planes and um, somewhat informal. And, um, and uh, when we got, uh, you know, we're leaving uh, Tana Island, um, the pilot had flown us to Ambrim and he said, oh, anything you want to see on the way? And I said, yes, you know, can we uh, circle the um, uh, uh, active crater? And he said, oh yeah, sure. You know, so uh, those are our photos and including at the bottom a photo um, with an infrared camera. Uh, and uh, so that was quite cool to, you know, fly uh, informally like that. Of course, it was a small plane. Um, and uh, I'm going to show you 
this is the azure so you can see the uh, uh, these are small eruptions small explosions and uh, the, there are gases coming out and it just explodes you know then um more explosive is volcanian activity a couple of photos of mount etna i showed you this one on the on the right before uh, a colleague of mine took this photo and he said they uh, actually ended up running which is not a a wise thing to do on a volcano, but uh, they they were there for too long when the explosion started getting bigger and bigger. You don't want to be close to um, uh, when you get a lot of ash, a lot of um, 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 uh, explosive activity. And um, uh, and one uh, place that uh, you know erupted in 1902 was uh, and gave its name to Pelean eruptions. Is Mont Pelee in Martinique. Um, that's a very nasty type of volcano. Um, on the top left is Mont Pelee as it is these days. It has not erupted for a long time, so it's vegetated. At the bottom uh, is a, a photo from 1902 showing the devastation. Um, there, were, uh, there was a, a big eruption that sent down a flow that's called a um, pyroclastic flow of uh, uh, the hot gases, ash, some rocks, and it killed nearly 30,000 people, devastated the, uh, the city. It's a very interesting story. And the uh, place on the right, that's the door to what used to be a prison. And the only person in the center of town who survived uh, was a man uh, who was in prison. And, uh, and his prison only had a very narrow window at the top and rescuers uh, uh, found him. He was hurt. Some of the, the hot gases and ash had come inside the prison cell, but he was still alive. And after that, he was pardoned. So uh, here is another place in the Caribbean uh, where um, we um, have had, um, uh, uh, an, an eruptions of this nasty type. And, uh, you know, I was there in uh, uh, 1996. Um, and, um, uh, and you can see here what a pyroclastic flow is. It can even flow over water. So this is a very, uh, sometimes very light uh, mixture of gases, very hot gases and hot ash. And uh, that's what killed people in uh, Pompeii and Herculaneum, uh, and it's very, very nasty. And uh, the most uh, dangerous types, Plinian and uh, Ultraplinian, extremely violent, and uh, Mount St. Helens in 1950, uh, sorry, 1980, was a Plinian eruption, and here are some um, photos of uh, Mount St. Helens. So this eruption left a, a huge crater um, uh, on the side of the volcano. Okay, so let's go to the planets. Um, and uh, on the moon, um, we have dark areas that are long lava flows and floods of lava, and then some lighter colored areas uh, that are actually mostly uh, impact craters. Um, and um, uh, the, so the moon has these seas of lava, um, and they're actually called Mari. Uh, which is C in Latin. And uh, if you look carefully, if you can follow my mouse, you can see the um, outline of uh, some uh, old lava flows uh, on this uh, sea of lava. So, uh, you know, about three and a half billion years ago, this must have looked amazing. You know, if you were alive on Earth at that time, uh, you would look at the moon and just see, you know, all this glowing lava. Uh, there are, uh, you know, uh, a few small structures, a few small cones uh, on the moon, but mostly seas of lava, of cold lava. And uh, here um, uh, is what's called a real. A real is a collapsed lava tube, and um, uh, this is uh, uh, Hadley Hill. Uh, real is where the Apollo fifteen. Uh, mission uh, landed uh, near it. Now, if we go to Venus, 
uh, Venus has a recent and perhaps even active volcanism these days, but it has not been confirmed. Uh, we have some a uh, couple of missions in preparation to go to Venus, a uh, couple of NASA missions, and Europeans are also uh, sending a mission to Venus. There's a lot of interest on Venus at the moment. And um, um, so we're going to know a lot more. Venus has a very thick uh, cloud cover, so you have to use radar to see the surface of Venus. And this is a uh, radar reconstruction of uh, radar data in three dimensions. And you see a shield volcano like you find in Hawaii with a lava flow coming down in lighter color coming down from it. And then, you know, we have some collapse like uh, calderas and then some strange structures called um, uh, pancake domes. And I think I have an image, yes. This, um, I have a, an artist friend called Michael Carroll and he's a space artist. So he paints uh, images of um, uh, what uh, planetary landscapes uh, would look like if you were there. And um, he painted these uh, pancake domes on Venus. So these um, domes are um, uh, formed by quite viscous lava, but that has very little gas in it. Um, and uh, also, you know, Venus, because of that atmosphere has a, you know, high surface pressure. Uh, so it inhibits the gas um, coming out. Uh, so if you have, um, you know, like very um, um, viscous pasty lava, but without much gas in it, then it just sort of oozes out. And we think that's what happened here. You know, the lava oozed out uh, and it, you end up with a shape like a pancake. On Mars, we find some of the largest volcanoes in the solar system. Uh, so uh, Olympus Mons is a structure that is 600 kilometers in diameter. Uh, you see at the top, there is a, a, a series of uh, calderas, you know, collapsed calderas. And uh, at the, if you just take a sliver at the bottom here, you can see a number of lava flows going over. There's a cliff all around the volcano. And it's also 26 kilometers high, but if you do the calculation, the slopes are actually pretty gentle, you know, about four degrees because um, uh, it's a very, very you know, broad uh, volcano. Uh, this is a three-dimensional view, so you can see the scarp. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, superimposed on, um, um, it is, uh, you know, essentially topographic data uh, that uh, you can use to reconstruct uh, more or less the, the, the shape of the volcano. And, um, um, and now um, the cliffs, my first project on my PhD was to actually suggest that these cliffs and some um, material that's kind of very rugged material uh, uh, that forms lobes all around the volcano were actually formed by um, landslides. And that's still an explanation accepted today. So um, I'm very proud of that because um, you know, I was um, you know, a, a young thing and wasn't quite sure what I was doing. <laughs> but the uh, volcanoes I studied more recently uh, were on the Io. Uh, that is Jupiter's volcanic moon, is nicknamed the pizza moon because it looks like a pizza. Io is a really weird place. Um, these colors on the, so, uh, on the surface are all from sulfur, you know, the yellows, the reds, the oranges. Um, but the places that look like the olives on the pizza, the really dark places, uh, those are where the uh, active lavas are. Uh, so you, um, uh, you know, when lava, uh, you know, is, is uh, recent or still active, uh, then um, uh, it's pretty dark. And, uh, uh, and after it cools off, um, then sulfur dioxide, which is a gas that's coming out of uh, the volcanoes, can condense on it. And I worked with uh, this instrument called the Near Infrared Mapping Spectrometer. And, um, and that instrument detected um, volcanoes in the infrared. So all the bright spots here are active volcanoes. And uh, by doing very careful pixel by pixel comparison, I ended up 
finding uh, 71 uh, active volcanoes. And um, you know, my colleagues at the time uh, joked with me that I should be in the Guinness Book of World Records. And, uh, and then some years later, a young man came from England to work with me and he heard the joke and he said, oh, I have a friend who works for the Guinness Book of World Records. I should tell him about that. And uh, so the friend did some investigations and uh, wrote to some of my colleagues, got some of my papers, and that's how I have a little note uh, only on the 2006 uh, edition, which was very funny because never in my life I thought I would end up on the Guinness Book of World Records. And, uh, you know, and as the person who... Um, discovered the most active volcanoes anywhere. <laughs> so uh, go to the next one. And uh, now why is Io? Uh, uh, that's a small moon. Uh, that's Io there, the orange colored one is a moon of Jupiter. Why is Io volcanically active? Because it's a moon the same size as the Earth's moon. So it should have cooled a long time ago. But Io is in a very peculiar orbit um, around Jupiter. It's uh, is a, 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 an orbit that is synchronized with uh, other moons of Jupiter. Uh, the second one is Europa, third one is Ganymede, fourth one is Callisto. This is a montage, by the way, um, not a real picture. And it's a montage made from um, images from the Voyager spacecraft that flew by there in 1979. Um, well, so what happens that the gravity of Jupiter pulls Io towards it and forms a, a tide that's like, a, you know, like the tides we have on the seas of, of the Earth, but this is a crustal tide, so it's like the whole crust, uh, you know, uh, uh, bulges up. Uh, but then those other moons, uh, uh, particularly Europa and Ganymede, are on the other side of Io, and they are pulling that bulge towards it. So Io is like in a tug of war uh, between, you know, the uh, the planet Jupiter and the other moons. Uh, so uh, that makes the um, uh, you know that bulge get distorted and uh, heats up the interior, uh, and uh, and that's why Io is still volcanically active. And so that's a Voyager image from 1979. I was still a student when this was taken. And that's a plume uh, on the, uh, uh, about, you know, 100 kilometers high uh, uh, going up from the surface of Io. Uh, so that's quite extraordinary. What I studied on Io are uh, volcanoes that um, I found um, a lava lakes. So that's, um, uh, at the top here is an image of a volcano that, as I told you, the, the dark parts uh, are actually either fresh lava or active lava. And, um, and this on the right um, is um, a couple of thermal maps uh, from, uh, uh, from NIMS, from the instrument I worked with. We could calculate temperatures. And uh, I started noticing that um, um, uh, this, uh, not just this volcano, but several had hot edges. Um, and um, uh, you have, you get hot edges on a lava lake, uh, like this one here in Hawaii. And um, why? Because as I told you before, lava cools very quickly when it gets to the surface, but underneath is still molten. So if you imagine uh, scum on a pond, uh, as the you know, water on the pond, you know, moves a little, uh, the scam hits the sides and uh, breaks up. So that's what's happening here. Uh, the, um, the material is still moving and that crust breaks against the sides of the, uh, of the crater uh, or caldera and starts breaking up. So you get these hot edges. Uh, and that's a, a, an image taken by the camera at nighttime. And, uh, and again, you see this line uh, of hot material. So lava lakes are actually quite rare enough. We only have like a, you know, half a dozen of them active at a particular time, but they appear to be very common on Io. And uh, this is one of the most beautiful images of um, the Tupan uh, caldera on Io that's about 
uh, seven kilometers or 44 miles across. Um, and, um, and again, uh, you know, the material that's dark is hot. So uh, this volcano has a, a kind of island in the middle that's cold, but as this crust, uh, you know, hits the, the sides, uh, it's, uh, it breaks up. So you can see this line uh, of uh, hot material. Um, and, uh, and then on the side where we have more uh, active lava um, uh, that hasn't quite formed a crust, we can also see some uh, funny green material that, uh, uh, you know, looks like it, um, uh, uh, it, it flowed down from the edges. And my uh, uh, friend and colleague, Michael Carroll, painted the interior of this caldera. What we think is happening is that sulfur uh, is melting and, uh, and coming down uh, to the, the interior and sitting on top of the lava. Um, so a space artist imagines what the landscape would look like if you were there. And that was actually our first collaboration. We ended up collaborating on three books. And when he started asking me things like, uh, well, describe what it would be like being there. Uh, it was quite challenging because, you know, as scientists, we don't tend to think that way. We just look at data. Um, so um, uh, I know I don't have a lot of time, so I'll, um, um, uh, I'll tell you that, uh, you know, I got particularly interested uh, in studying uh, volcano lava lakes on Earth. And one of the places I went with some colleagues, um, I'm the one there on the right, um, was Ita Ali Volcano in Ethiopia, which is a fantastic place. And I'm so sad that, um, you know, Ethiopia is in such a bad situation at the moment. Uh, and this is in the, you know, north uh, of Ethiopia. And, um, um, and uh, uh, the city where we flew to, which was the closest city before we had to drive for days, um, it was one of the worst places in the recent conflict. But this lava lake is spectacular. Um, it's about 100 meters across. Uh, and you can go, you know, or we could at the time, um, go right uh, to the edge. Um, and uh, I'm going to show you a movie here that we took. Um, so you can see again this, you know, hot edge. Uh, 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 in the side uh, of the uh, of the crater, uh, and how the material is like, you know, it's almost like a, a sea, and, and but you know it um, crosses over, gets cooler quite quickly. You know, these dark parts are cooler, and we were studying the distribution of temperatures uh, inside uh, this um, caldera so that we could compare uh, with, uh, with bio. And uh, in a minute, you're going to see here is our infrared um, image from which we could calculate temperatures. So um, here is the edge of the lava lake. Um, on the back is the wall and then the, the, the lava um, in the lake. And this is another lake uh, in uh, Ambrim in Vanuatu. Uh, so uh, that one is also quite spectacular, but you can't get as close to that one because it's, it's quite deep. So um, this is uh, not the only type of volcano uh, that we have. We have some cold volcanoes as well. So this is a, you know, I'll um, leave you with an image of, uh, uh, you know, of Io uh, with one of the plumes. And, uh, and this moon here is called uh, Europa. And um, uh, Europa is an icy moon and it has a different type of volcanism because um, um, the material that uh, is under that icy crust is water. Uh, so um, uh, some uh, plumes have been detected that are, are plumes of water, and we call that cryovolcanism, but we have no equivalent uh, on Earth. Uh, and so I want to leave uh, 15 minutes for questions, so I'm going to um, 
stop sharing um, and, uh, um, and see if we have uh, any questions. That was fantastic. Thank you so much. It was, we already have some questions in our chat. Yes. Do you want to read them yourself or? Um, uh, right, okay. Um, what right. are the temperatures of the different lavas you have seen or studied? Uh, well, um, you know, uh, in Celsius, uh, the, 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 the hottest lavas are um, the basaltic lavas. You know, they're about, um, you know, 1200, 1250 Celsius. Um, there were hotter lavas on Earth and there may be on Io called uh, ultramafic uh, lavas. Uh, they don't erupt on Earth anymore, uh, but those were a couple hundred degrees uh, uh, hotter. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, undesired rhyolite are kind of cooler, you know, maybe 900 Celsius, 600 Celsius. So actually, it is a, this is a good question because the, um, uh, the er erupting temperature is actually a, a, a good hint of the what the composition of the lava is. The difficulty uh, when you're using remote sensing is that lava cools quite quickly. Uh, so uh, for example, if I measure 1200 Celsius on Io, I don't know if uh, that's a, a basalt that is at, at its maximum temperature uh, or um, if it is an ultramafic uh, lava that has cooled down and lava cools quite quickly. So that's, uh, you know, it, it can be difficult to, to use that uh, um, uh, in remote sensing. Um, so do organisms grow from the lava? Um, well, uh, uh, organisms can grow um, in volcanic regions, uh, you know, uh, and uh, for example, geothermal regions, uh, those uh, ponds in Yellowstone that are uh, actually very hot. Uh, you know, yes, you have a number of algae and uh, other things uh, growing there. Um, so um, I wouldn't say from lava, but certainly you, you get on lava. Um, what are the volcano, uh, are we on Volcano Watch for any area in particular? Uh, a website, the Smithsonian Institute uh, has a, a volcano website. Um, I, um, I, I, you know, I don't know it from the top of my head, but if you Google Smithsonian and volcanoes, you find it and you find information on many places around the world. Um, uh, if you want to find out about a particular volcano, um, uh, you can find it there. They also um, uh, have a bulletin uh, that they send out um, uh, on uh, which volcanoes are active. And most people are surprised that, you know, every month, um, I would say there are like 20 or 30 active volcanoes. It's just most of the time you don't hear about them. And if they don't destroy property or kill people, you're not going to hear about them you know, particularly. Uh, so uh, we tend to hear about the big bad ones. Um, uh, probably most people here never heard of, uh, 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 you know, Yazoo volcano on Vanuatu and it's been constantly active for, um, uh, you know, at, at least since the uh, 1800s when it was most, you know, first written about. And uh, Stromboli in Italy has been active for about 2000 years almost without stopping. Um, so, uh, but if they don't cause damage or trouble, then, um, you know, the journalists don't tend to write about them. Um, and then another question, uh, have you experienced difficulty in your profession because you're a woman? I would say, um, you know, maybe, uh, but I, um, I never really paid much attention to that. Um, I, um, just decided that I knew what I wanted to do and I went ahead and did it. Um, and, uh, you know, you always have some individuals that might give you a bit of a hard time, uh, but, um, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it, it was not really a major factor in my career. I just went ahead and did what I wanted to do. 
um, and um, um, you know, I think that um, uh, it, it's most discouraging probably when women are like teenagers and it might stop them from getting into science in the first place. But many, uh, you know, if not most of the women I know in science, you know, by the time you get to university, you, I mean, you're so determined that, um, you know, you, it, it's difficult for someone mm -hmm. to deter you from doing something you want to do. Uh, so I think that um, some studies have shown that we, we have a problem with girls getting interested. They're they they interested in science when they are quite young. And then something happened about the, uh, the early teenage years. Uh, and they, they, they seem to lose interest or, or, or become discouraged. Um, so uh, with uh, many other people, I climbed Sufriere on Guadeloupe. Uh, yes, I, I, uh, I, I, I didn't actually, I haven't been to Sufriere on Guadeloupe. I've been to Sufriere in St. Vincent. We had no mass and the gases were strong. Uh, what are those gases? Um, and uh, yeah, well, you're probably not stupid if the, the wind was blowing, which usually <laughs> tends to do in the um, in the Caribbean, uh, uh, where uh, those gases um, are actually most of it is water vapor, but it's got some uh, uh, sulfur dioxide. It can have some hydrogen sulfide, and hydrogen sulfide is very nasty. It is what gives you the rotten egg smell. Um, but um, uh, we use um, gas masks uh, if we are going, um, uh, if we're really doing field work uh, on volcanoes. Um, and um, I, I haven't had to wear my gas mask very often because a lot of the time you have a wind blowing. Uh, one place where um, uh, I, um, I didn't have a gas mask uh, uh, and uh, I would have gotten much closer to the, the lava flow was that lava flow in Iceland recently. I actually got to the edge of it, uh, but I didn't stay there very long because it wasn't a, a, like a steep depression. Uh, and, uh, and I started going down that, uh, you know, that valley. Uh, and, uh, and at one point, you know, you couldn't feel the wind anymore. And then that's when it started getting nasty. Uh, so I just didn't stay very long. Um, but uh, they can be dangerous, yes. Um, uh, so uh, yes, usgs.gov, also a very good source of information. My latest uh, project, um, uh, I'm actually studying, um, I didn't have time to go into this, but I studied Saturn's moon Titan that has uh, that, you know, a nice crust and, um, uh, and uh, possibly volcanism or had it in the past, uh, but uh, the volcanism was water um, that came to the surface. And we think that this layer of water under the ice crust might sustain life. So I am leading a very international team um, that we are studying the possibility that um, uh, life could have developed on Titan because Titan has a lot of organic materials uh, as well. Um, but that's, that's a whole other presentation. Um, so do I think that Mount Rainier will erupt like Mount St. Helens? Uh, it might. Um, and Rainier is actually considered the most hazardous volcano in the US. And why is that? Because um, there is a, a glacier uh, on top of uh, Rainier and, um, uh, and an eruption could melt that, that glacier and create uh, mud flows. And mud flows are very dangerous. You might have read in the news about um, in Indonesia, there was a volcano that erupted you know, uh, a few days ago um, or in the last week and uh, some mud flows came down and uh, actually killed some people. Uh, so, um, uh, you know, mud flows are one of the dangers from that type of um, um, uh, explosive volcanoes. Um, there is a lot of ash, uh, and then um, uh, if, the, if ice or a glacier starts melting, that can mix uh, with the ash, and that can come down the slopes, and uh, it's very, very dangerous. Uh, and um, in fact, parts of Seattle and Tacoma are built on 
old mud flow deposit. So uh, we got to watch that one very carefully. Have I met Mike? Um, uh, uh, Michael Ravine. Uh, yes, I met him. I don't know him well. Um, yes. And uh, oh, um, uh, which ones of my books would I recommend for the lay person? Um, yes. Um, uh, and uh, Michael Carroll has uh, lots of books as well. Um, the um, uh, If you're interested in um, um, uh, visiting volcanoes. I wrote one called the Volcano Adventure Guide, and uh, you know, let me see. I I can even show it here. <laughs> uh, and uh, you know, a few parts are a bit out of date, but the overall, um, uh, because I, I had field guides to particular volcanoes, uh, and um, and and uh, you know, so I don't have the latest eruptions, uh, for example, described. Uh, Michael Caro and I uh, wrote another one called Antarctica's Earths on the Ice World when we actually went to Antarctica to um, uh, visit Mount Erebus in Antarctica, the only uh, active volcano in Antarctica that has a lava lake at the bottom. And um, uh, we edited one called um, Alien Seas, uh, you know, and that's a little bit more um, uh, kind of uh, technical. And, um, uh, and we also wrote one called Alien Volcanoes, uh, which I'm not sure that I have um, yeah, reach, uh, but, um, uh, and, and uh, you know, and also if you Google on Amazon, you know, either me or Michael Carroll, you find, you know, a, a lot of books. And, um, you know, most of mine uh, have been um, kind of more for the undergraduate level, but, um, uh, the uh, Alien Volcanoes, uh, the Antarctica one, and the Volcano Adventure Guide are popular level uh, books. Um, so, um, have I studied ancient volcanic eruptions on Earth? Um, well, depends what you mean by ancient. Um, I actually did spend um, six months as a postdoc um, uh, in Naples, and I studied lava flows from Vesuvius. Uh, so yes, I have studied some uh, uh, old eruptions on uh, Vesuvius. Oh, your son worked in Iceland and sent sent photos. Iceland is a delightful place. It's really wonderful. Uh, the volcanoes um, sending the flames straight out of the side of the craters through fissures. Um, uh, is this a common sighting? Uh, well, it, it's, it's shooting lava. Um, uh, lava fountains uh, up a fissure. Uh, yes, that's relatively common on um, Hawaiian and Icelandic type volcanoes. Uh, so uh, it's, um, you know, I, if you go to Hawaii or Iceland, there's no guarantee you're going to see that. It's quite a spectacular sight when you do see it. Um, so any, any other questions? I think Rosalie, we... I know you've been to 50 countries. Um... Oh, more oh, maybe even more by now from what I read. Yeah. Um, how many of those have been to see volcanoes? Most oh, of them? Are... No, um, uh, certainly, you know, quite a few. I went to Antarctica to see a volcano. Um, mm -hmm. you know, well, Antarctica is a continent and not a country, but um, <laughs> I, um, yeah, I wow. went to Iceland to see volcanoes, um, uh, even Japan. Um, to see volcanoes, Vanuatu. Um, so I tend to like chasing volcanoes in my, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> sometimes in my spare time. <laughs> uh, it's Amazing. actually a, a lot of it. And I, uh, you know, Ethiopia, the Ethiopia trip was uh, especially to, to see the active volcano. Uh, so, um, yes, I would like to do more, but, um, you know, my work these days is on other projects, so I don't um, uh, tend to have much of an excuse to go to Volcanoes on Earth for my work, <laughs> but I go on vacation often. <laughs> so are you still working on the Titan project? Uh, yes, uh, yeah. For Saturn? Yeah. yeah. Yes, yes, um, yes, uh, uh, you know, that's my main area of research uh, at the moment, because I worked on the Cassini mission and we got, you know, great data. Um, and then I won a large grant uh, to, um, to lead this team that uh, is studying the habitability of Titan. Mm. 
That's it's exciting. very exciting to win. Yes, yes. yes. Do you think something like Pompeii could ever happen again? Anywhere? In oh, the yes, yes. Um, you know, Mount St. Helens was like a Pompeii type of eruption. Uh, mm -hmm. And, um, uh, you know, we, we even in the United States, we got some potentially nasty volcanoes like uh, Mount Rainier. Um, and, uh, you know, Mount St. Helens erupted in 1980. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, yeah, Pompeii was not a huge eruption as eruptions go. Um, you know, it was big, but it was not unusual for that type of volcano. Hmm. You know, it's just famous. <laughs> but <laughs> Vesuvius has erupted many other times. <laughs> okay, this has just been really exciting. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. It's so wonderful much. to meet you all. And, and I uh, hope you can come see our, our clubhouse sometime because we're very proud of it. And we can host you there. All right. That would be great. All right. Thanks so much. Thanks, everybody. And those of you still here, uh, we have our um, event on the 8th, um, which is this Wednesday, our big holiday boutique and luncheon. And you're welcome to come just to shop, or we will also have our, uh, uh, we will have box lunches with champagne. Um, in the box lunch <laughs> and the bar will be open and you can shop until 6 p.m. at night. So um, stop by and then we will have a foodie Friday for holiday on the 17th. And this will be with um, party planning with uh, Sue's Landay. And then we, of course we have a wait list now for our SoFi tour on December 15th where we're all going to the stadium. but. Um, that is sold out at this point, but I believe Meredith is keeping a wait list. So happy holidays, everyone. And thank you so much, Rosalie, for taking the oh, time. Thank you. This was this was fun. Cheers. Yes. Bye-bye. Thank you.